Xtool is changing things up with a machine built specifically for metal. In today's video, I'm headed to Nashville to test out the all new Xtool Metal Fab. Also, stick around for the secret code word for your chance to win my tiny but mighty laser pecker. What was supposed to be just a five hour drive from Georgia turned into seven hours because of a lot of stop and go traffic. I made it to the apartment I booked on VRBO, got a quick tour, then worked on my project files late into the night so I would have something to test out the next morning. Xtool has graciously invited me to be one of the people to get to check out their newest machine. It's a handheld laser cutter, welder, or CNC based machine. There's so much to this thing that I am really glad that I get to be here at this demonstration because I have a lot of questions and I know a lot of you are going to have a lot of questions so we can all learn about it and see if this machine might be a good fit for me or for all of you. Let's go ahead and head on down the street and go learn all we can about the X-Tool Metal Fab. All right, we just pulled up, so let's go inside and check it out. At the demo space, I met some others you might recognize. And if you don't, you should be following them. I'll leave all their information in the video description. First, I met Kyle from Spicer Designs, who has an incredible YouTube channel that's filled with humor, heavy equipment, and lots of inspiring projects. Next, I met Zeke. I'm Chad. I'm Zeke. From Laser Cutting Repair. He is one of the other beta testers who flew over from the West Coast, so he has a little more experience with the machine and for the first day was our resident expert. I also got to see my friend Nick from 6-8 Woodworks who puts out an insane amount of products in his videos. If you need some inspiration in woodworking or using any of the latest machines, be sure to check him out. This demo space was all put together within the last three weeks by the guys at Dio Designs, Mike and his brother Timmy. I'm extremely thankful that they teamed up with Xtool to put together this space for us and the general public, who in the future might be wanting to get their hands-on experience with all these various different machines that Xtool is putting out. Mike was a great host and a very good teacher. He is trying to build his presence here on YouTube, so do me a favor and be sure to subscribe to his channel over at Dio Designs. Xtool also sent over example projects that were all cut and welded with the Xtool Metal Fab. So let's take a closer look at those. First, we have this welcome sign that was cut out from some very thick steel. Here you can see the top side, and here's the back with very minimal slag, not at all what you would get with a plasma cutter. Here's a look at a cutout art piece of a woman's face. Same thing here, very clean cuts even on this thicker steel. Over here, we have a functional chair made out of quarter inch thick steel. This thing was solid, no flexing at all, and the welds were extremely clean. Then we have a fully fabricated rocket stove with a functional front door, complete with a multi-step pot rack on the top for cooking, and again, the welds are super clean. They made a brass end table, which you can imagine going into any luxury hotel or living space. Here on their banner, you can see examples and applications of a fire pit, exhaust pipes, a bird made out of a collection of pieces, a roof rack, yard art, a low poly dog sculpture, and some high end side tables. All right, now let's check out the machine and see all the various features I can find. Currently, it has a CNC mode where we can see the hand unit is placed inside the automated holder. The working area inside the machine is 24 by 24 inches, but it also has a pass through where you can send any length through that's 24 inches tall or less. The Z axis can travel up or down 3.54 inches. As of now, I'm not aware of any add-on type accessories like a pass-through roller feeder for cutting long lengths like on the P2 CO2 laser, but that's definitely something I could see Xtool doing in the future. It has an all-metal body, which gives it a very industrial feel. There are two separate cameras, one for taking a wide shot of the whole work area and a second mounted to the gantry for close-up precision. The cut area has various options. You can put in the slats for holding up your materials or hold them down with the built-in clamps. 
The X and Y gantries appear to be fully enclosed, which should make for an extremely durable and long lasting machine. This is the 1200 watt unit, which has a fiber laser source and a separate wire feeder for welding. I believe the smaller 800 watt has the laser source and wire feeder all in one unit, which might be a better choice for someone planning on doing a lot of mobile welding. Either of the laser sources will require a 240 volt outlet, just like you'd see on your clothes dryer or oven. So if you don't already have one in your workspace, call around to some electricians and be sure you know what that might cost to add. The CNC can be used with just a standard 120 volt outlet. On the back side, we can see it has a built in six inch exhaust port and fan that activates automatically. And the run times can be adjusted in the software so you can have it run much longer after your job finishes to clear out the workspace. When cutting, you will need high pressure air. Here you can see we are using the Xtool Select air compressor. My understanding is with thinner metals, compressed air works just great. Here you can see the air drying unit, which makes sure that no moisture is sent inside the cutting nozzle, which can damage the lens covers. With the thicker stuff or some specific types of metal, you will want either nitrogen or oxygen gas, which you can get from your local welding supply stores. But keep in mind, adding these gases can be an added cost. Since the X-Tool Metal Fab is a fully enclosed unit, achieving a safe work environment is much easier. The whole unit has multiple sensors and will not run if any of the doors are not fully closed. We did see some cutting sparks shooting out from some of the gaps, which might only be seen on these machines because they are prototypes, but I would urge everyone to be sure their unit is fully sealed or nothing flammable is near the machine when cutting. Mike also suggested adding sand inside in the bottom to help catch some of the sparks. Now let's get to cutting. I prepared my logo and Zeke walked me through how to bring my design into the free Xtool Creative Space software. We put in the parameters, then the machine automatically moves over and measures the distance from the material to be cut. After that, you press the button on the front of the machine and it starts cutting. Now I felt confident enough to enlarge my logo on the software myself and send the cut file to the machine for a second go. Let's take a look at it in real time and see how fast it cuts all the details out of my logo. Here, I believe we are cutting at 100 millimeters a second, but the stats say it can run up to 400 millimeters a second, or four times as fast, depending on the thickness and the type of material being cut. This is some pretty thin material here, but with the 1200 watt, it states that it can cut up to 10 millimeter thick materials, or eight millimeter with the smaller 800 watt. Down at the bottom of the machine is a pull-out tray where you can access all of your cut-out pieces. You'll see it from the back side. Mm -hmm. Very smooth, no dross, no slag or anything on the back. Super clean cuts. Really impressed with that. Now we can see close up just how small of a cutting curve this laser has. It reminds me of just how thin the beams are on the diode lasers when cutting out wood. Three. To switch over to the welding function, thankfully it is all tool free. You just remove the laser head from the CNC with a latch. These hatches. There are two connections there. Line up right here. And it's just as simple as that. Then you pull these. You can start do it in the beginning or at the end, and that's it. Perfect. Then replace the cutting nozzle with the welding nozzle and attach the wire feed cable. You will also attach the ground line to your welding table or to the object you will be welding on. With the laser welding, you tap on the screen to select the metal thickness and you actually press the nozzle and wire directly into the spot you would like to weld. Laser welding doesn't require the blacked out welding helmets that make it impossible to see what you're doing. All we had to wear was these specific wavelength protective glasses. 
It was so nice to be able to see right where the welding wire was in what we were trying to do. Amazingly, when you pull the trigger, the wire feeder pushes your hand backwards at a consistent speed, giving you amazing results. It seems so easy, it feels like you're cheating. And unlike normal welding, it appears the heat stays so concentrated that there's no need for tack welding to keep the metal from warping. You can start with laying down a solid welds without any issues of warpage. The only thing you have to worry about is keeping track of the angle and figuring out how to stop the weld without making it get stuck at the end of the line. A few of us had a problem with getting the technique down for stopping, but I will say Nick from 6-8 Woodworks was becoming a pro and was coming out with extremely good welding results. I will give a word of caution. When laser welding, always be mindful of where that laser beam is pointing. Treat it like it's a loaded weapon. At one point, Zeke was helping to hold two pieces of metal together and the laser beam blasted directly through his leather glove and right into his finger. He played it off like a tough guy, but I can only imagine how bad that must have hurt. The welds almost seemed too pretty to be strong. I figured we would easily be able to break these welds, especially since it was only welded on one side. But after multiple attempts at throwing it onto the ground, and then putting all of my weight onto the joint, bending it back and forth multiple times, it was apparent that these pieces of metal were indeed permanently fused. Sadly, we ran out of time in the demo room before getting to try out the rust removal process for ourselves. But I did find some videos of it being done, and this can either be done handheld, or you can do laser cleaning with the CNC for even more consistent cleaning results. As far as I understand, the maintenance on this machine will include making sure to keep these glass covers clean. Mike recommended these glass cleaning cloths. I think everything else would include making sure to keep up with the consumables like wire spools for welding, the different types of gases like argon for welding, and nitrogen or oxygen for cutting thicker metals. I had a few products I wanted to get made before we ran out of time in the demo space. One thing I wanted to try was recreating the acrylic stands and wooden QR codes that I make and sell with my small business engravings to you. We didn't have time to adjust the notches to match the thickness of the metal, but you get the idea. I used the F1 Ultra to engrave a QR code onto the metal blank that I had the metal fab cut out for me. Forget ordering ordinary blanks online. With this cutting machine, you can make any shape engraving blanks you can think of. I know how appealing a machine like this would be for knife makers. So I put in a silhouette for a large cleaver and a chef knife. Oh my word. That out. It's gonna be a nice little chef knife for cutting cheese. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank you. I took these home and used my Harbor Freight belt grinder to put a sharp edge on them. And just like that, I have created my own professional looking knives without hours and hours of cutting out my blanks with an angle grinder. Something else I wanted to try was recreating a product that I modeled up a long time ago. I modeled this up and I 3D printed this one and it took days to get it all printed on a 3D printer. And it's already falling apart. I took my 3D design and made a two-dimensional version of it that could be bent over and welded together. The design still needs some adjustments, 
and bending this metal was much tougher than I expected. Eventually, I got it all bent and hammered into place, but I struggled to weld it together. I believe we had the setting set up too high, as the laser appeared to be cutting right through it. I eventually brought it home and pulled out my Harbor Freight MIG welder and put on some nasty flux core welds to hold it into place. I grinded them down and they still looked awful. But let's see if it's functional. I screwed it into the wall at my sanding station and now I can conveniently organize my sanding disc by their different grits and not have to worry about this one falling apart like the 3D printed version. I must say my expectations were well surpassed getting a first hands experience with the X-Tool Metal Fab. I still have so much more I would like to try with it, but with a machine like this, it feels like the sky is the limit. At the same time, this might be way too much machine for some. As easy as their software makes it, I would say this shouldn't be your first machine purchase. I'd say this is best for intermediate or advanced users. We were all asked to take a guess at what we think the price would be. Some said more than 20,000. Say somewhere in the 20,000 range. I was thinking if I aimed a little lower, maybe it would help us out. My guess would be maybe in the $15,000 range, somewhere in there. But looking at machines with similar power ratings, I found prices ranging from 63000 and even higher. They do currently have their prices listed and are offering 10% off with one referral or 20% off with two. They have the welders by themselves at 5000 for the 800 watt or 7000 for the 1200 watt or the whole setup like you saw in the demo space for 14000 for the 1200 watt or 12000 for the 800 watt. Now these prices could change as I'm seeing the dates March 24th through April 23rd. So this might be early bird pricing, but I'll make sure to have the best deals in any promo codes in the video description or pinned comment. But let me say this before you all run off and go buy this thing. Please don't put yourself into debt to go get this machine. If you have a product idea in mind, what you think you could make and sell to pay this thing off within a month or so, I don't doubt you. But maybe instead of taking on the full risk right away, consider maybe using a metal cutting and fabrication service like Send Cut Send, where you can upload your design, get it fabricated, then you can see if the market is interested in your idea before you invest into a full machine purchase of your own. All right, I haven't forgotten about giving this laser pecker laser away. Let's confuse all those people who try to cheat that will go straight to the comments to find the secret word. So this time you can say any random code word that you like. This time any commenter who is also subscribed is eligible to be entered to win. So make sure you're subscribed and comment any random word you like. I'll reach out to the winner in the comments in a month or so and I'll announce the winner on my community tab. Thanks to everyone for coming along with me in this video as I got to try out the X-Tool Metal Fab. Until next time, I'm Chad from Chad's Custom Creations, reminding you all to be encouraged, stay inspired, and keep on creating.